All right. Well, Ali, welcome to the Black and Red family. You're Thank coming. You. You're coming to DC from Nashville, where you you've been with them since their inaugural season. Um, before we get into it, although I want to talk about you, because this is a really big step in your career. I mean, how does it feel to become the next GM? Yeah. No, it feels great. I think um, it's a proud moment. I think it's something that for me, um, my family, uh, where I come from. I think this is something that I'm uh, really excited about. I have been here a number of times in DC with uh, a visiting team, and I think now um, just excitement to get going. I think, you know, uh, the the time of year, looking at all the various aspects of MLS and and then trying to get to preseason, I think is uh, is yeah, it's an exciting aspect. I'm just super excited to get going. What was it about DC, the city, and DC United as the club that really interested you? Yeah, there's there's a couple of aspects. I think you know, in, in speaking with uh, Jason and Steve, I think you know you understand how big this club is. You know, you understand the history, and you look at you know what the club's done, and and then the potential. You know, the the stadiums there. It's in a beautiful uh, arena where the guys can play. I think um, you know the the roster. Um, just loads of aspects that I, I thought, you know, and, and again, taking an aspect of leaving Nashville was, was difficult, but I think um, with the size of the club and the uh, excitement around it, I think, you know, it was just too good to turn down. Well, I'm sure everybody wants to know who Ali Mackay is. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> yeah, so, you are. You are. Well done. Good. Well done. Thank you. I'm going to put you on the spot here, though. Okay. Um, give me three adjectives that describe who you are. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> energetic, uh, loyal, and hardworking. Can you give me a little bit of reasoning as to why you chose those three words? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, um, where I've come from and, and the, the mentors and the people that, the friends and the family that have allowed me to get to this point, I think that loyalty has helped me a great deal. Um, energetic because I dive into absolutely everything uh, head first and, you know, I think that's an aspect that I, I really want to get going here quickly. Uh, to you know, move forward in the right direction, and uh, the hardworking aspect just goes without saying. I I think that's something that is paramount for not only myself but what my expectations are um, around you know the staff and and you know that aspect is something I think is key to any successful organization. Now, when people begin a new job, usually they spend the first couple of weeks transitioning into their new environment. It's a bit more slower pace because yeah. they get used to it all. But that's not really the case for you. I mean, no. being a GM, yeah. not an ordinary nope. nine to five, I think it's safe to say and fair to say that the first month or two for you here at DC may be the most important. Your first tasks here are to establish the club identity and mm -hmm. the style of play. Can you give us some insight into what those will look like? Yeah, absolutely. I I think for me, um, you know, right now the head coach is faceless, but I think the criteria that I value, um, criteria that I think is important to have in a head coach, a style of play, you know, I know we have a large supporters group who are very vocal. I've, I, I've heard them a number of times when I've been here, um, so I'm excited to meet them. and. I think, you know, the essence for me in soccer is to entertain. And I think that that is something that, you know, um, that I want to impose on the club. I want to have an identity that um, not only myself, not only the staff, the players, I want everyone to be proud of. And I think that's an aspect that um, I want to take personally because, again, when you look at the history of this club, I think that it is something that um, it should be. There should be an identity there. There should be a style of play. And I want that to be something that excites the fans. Now, you gave me a little, a very brief overview as to who you are. I want to dive more into your leadership style mm -hmm. and, and how that will come into fruition here and how you see your leadership style really complementing the core of, of what's already here at DC. Yeah, no, I think for me, um, it's all about people. You know, I think you have to have the ability to talk to people, the ability to communicate, um, collaborate. Um, these are things that I think if you treat people in the right way, I think if you, uh, in my case, lead in the right way, I think that's something that 
uh, I definitely take personally. It's something that I think I wouldn't ask anyone in the building to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Um, and that's just something that, that, that's just what my genetic makeup is. I think, um, you know, a style or, you know, a, a type of leadership is something that is important for sure. But I think the fundamentals of just being a people person um, is, is paramount in anything. You know, you can talk to people all day long, but if you're not talking to them the right way or you're not, um, communicating the right message, people might not understand. And I think these are aspects that, you know, at a fundamental level are really important. Um, from the club side, I'm a big believer in data and analytics. Um, we did a lot of it in Nashville. I think that's something that it's not going to give you the full answers potentially, but I think that, you know, um, you have to be able to navigate through that and, and maybe use it as a North Star to, to find the answers that you're looking for. Um, and again, there's various aspects that are attached to that. But I, again, I think that's an important aspect that the club will utilize for sure. As you look for a head coach who aligns with you, your leadership styles, and along with the vision that you have for the club identity and the mm -hmm. style of play, what characteristics and experience are you looking for in all these head coach candidates? Yeah, no, I think the ability to communicate effectively, um, you know, organize structures, things like that. You know, I think it's a very unique league in terms of the climates, in terms of the travel, um, in terms of the, just the various different aspects that makes MLS what it is. Um, so having a, a foundational aspect to that I think is important. Um, and you know, these are elements that I think will, will be the genetic makeup of the coach. Um, but again, I think style of play, and you know, again, you want to have someone that is going to, you know, make people sit up in the locker room. And I think you want to have people that are accountable, but also have had the pedigree in the past to show that they can be successful. You know, I think um, there's there's various dis different aspects of that, but I think again, there's a lot there. Now, support staff around you and around the head coach, of course, is so vital mm -hmm. to help you guys in your vision and in your goal for this club. What other people and what additional roles will you look to bring on? Yeah, no, as you look at staff, I think you have to, you have to not necessarily look at yourself. I think you have to look at what are the aspects that maybe you're not great at. Um, which is, you know, trying to understand, okay, if I look at this one way, my background has been as an agent, yeah. you know, are there other aspects that I can focus perspectives on? So for example, the data and analytics that I talked about, I think that's um, an aspect that I think we should primarily focus on on the staff, um, maybe a former player. Um, these are aspects that I'm thinking about all the time, um, sometimes through the night. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I think it's important in any staff to have different perspectives so that you can see those different vantage points. Um, while we might not have all the answers initially, I think there, there are things there that if you have people in the room and everyone has a voice, I think that's important because, you know, that collaboration, that alignment, while you can get into some tough conversations behind closed doors if everyone's on the same page when you leave you know that is collaboration right there and i think that's that's important for people to have those different perspectives now i want to switch over to speaking about the players okay. dc united has some players several players that last year were very important and really helped the team mm -hmm. um, find success. Just to name a couple, Christian Benteke, Mateusz Klik, Ted Kudi Pietro, but I feel like I don't have to say it. I'm sure you were able to watch yeah. the team from afar. Of course. Um, are there any players that really excite you and how do you see them fitting into this style of play? Yeah, no, I think there's there's a lot of aspects there where you know everyone you've just named um, and many more obviously are, are uh, for sure uh, very interesting, you know, I think um, my role is is trying to understand how can I complement that and, and how can we add to that? You know, I think, um, you know, the players in the building right now are, are obviously very talented. I think the roster is very capable. Um, but again, I think there's pieces there that, you know, there needs to be fundamental pieces added for sure. Uh, and we're working on that yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, it's like any roster, but it's also, uh, it almost all goes hand in hand. Um, you know, my job, 
my primary focus right now is to find a head coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that has to align with, obviously, some of the guys in the roster that we have right now. It's, it would be like getting in a car race without knowing what the other guy has, you know. And I think um, when, you're, <clears throat> when you're assessing all of that, there has to be that holistic approach where, mm -hmm. okay, right, this is the roster that we have, this is the coach that we're looking for, and that has to be all focused in the one direction. Um, so all those aspects, I think, um, need to be, yeah, aligned to to have a product that obviously the supporters and everyone else will be proud of. Now, you just said we have some gaps to fill. So, of course, we have a little bit of time before the season starts. There are gaps in the roster to fill. And you just said it. We need to wait for a head coach to figure out what specifically mm -hmm. we need in these players. But what kinds of players do you think you'll start looking for? Is there a certain criteria that you want these players to have? Yeah, no, look, I think you always, um, you always want to be open for business, right? And I think, um, I think having that unity in terms of a staff and focused on an identity, that then is what you take into that aspect of player recruitment. Um, and, you know, this is not an autocracy, it's, it's definitely a democracy. And, and I'm included in that. Um, you know, I might have the ability to, to make some final decisions, but I'd like to think that everyone around, including the head coach, you know, will have, uh, you know, a very similar voice. And, and not similar as an opinion, it's that, you know, obviously the, the various different aspects of the league with a salary cap and things like that, these are things that, again, you can't just go out and get player X who's a world beater. You have to kind of look for various different players. Um, you know, we do want to try and get, uh, you know, players who fit the roles, um, players that fit the criteria that we're looking for, um, and that will all be brought into account when we're scouting and recruiting these players. Going from an MLS club, you understand the emphasis put on youth development and homegrowns breaking through to the first team. Mm -hmm. What value do you put on developing from within? Huge. I think um, the academy is something that you know uh, we certainly want to focus on um, i think the dmv area is is one that is very fertile in terms of youth development um, there's also a number of uh, very prestigious universities that have uh, or are in the area um, and and these are aspects that i think you know if it's done right and if it's done in the correct manner uh, we want people feeling good about the academy not only playing in the academy and getting recruited by the academy we want people to feel good about the options that the academy can create we want that to be something that again everyone's part everyone's part of not just ownership or myself or a head coach we want you know parents and families to feel good about being in the academy and we want to elevate that and i think that again the more players um, from the academy or, or from the area that we can put into the first team has a ton of benefit for sure, but it's also, you know, a hat tilt to the work that's going to get done as well. I have to speak a little bit about your time during Nashville because you helped put together a roster that includes such big players, such important players for the team like Honey Mukhtar and Walker Zimmerman. And we know it's not easy for expansion teams to do well in their first couple of years to find success. We saw that in Nashville. So what are you able to take from your time during there that will really help you at DC? I think it's putting those foundational pieces in place. Um, obviously how I work um, and, and, and how I want to operate is, is not reinventing the wheel. I think it's, it's, it's really, uh, you know, again, down to those aspects of hard work, but also putting some pillars in place, um, an analytical element, um, creating a culture in terms of the group um, and the greater staff and, and club as a whole. <clears throat> I want them to be proud of that. And I want to be proud of that, you know, and I think these are things that uh, we're going to be working around the clock to achieve and you know, there's there's no time to waste right now you know there's a ton of stuff coming up there's a ton of mechanisms there's the super draft there's uh, preseason which is right around the corner um, so these are things that again they might not get done overnight but we're going to try and act as as urgently as we can to to um, to focus on that you know, and I think, again, if, if we are moving in that direction, we're trying to get there um, in the right manner, I think that good things will happen.
Now, your experience goes off to a bunch of different things. You mentioned before that you were a player agent, which is such an interesting thing on your resume when mm -hmm. I look at all the other GMs. And you were with Stellar Group, a leading sports agency before Nashville. I mean, mm -hmm. how beneficial is it to have that on your resume as you're looking to build DC United, their identity, their style of play, and how will you use the global soccer connections that you've got? Yeah, no, I, I think um, I was chatting about this with a friend the other day. I, I think having that aspect is really important, especially in the salary cap league. Uh, contracts, negotiations, um, you know, these are things that I think uh, fundamentally are really important. And I think, you know, there's a lot of GMs in the league that do a really good job with that. Um, you know, and I think, you know, having that ability to potentially look at every aspect of a potential deal is really important. You know, is it is it a straight transfer? Is it a loan? Um, can you look at different formats that you could utilize that could maybe give you an edge? And, you know, again, it's, I'm certainly not gonna be reinventing the wheel, um, like I said, but I think, again, having an ability to understand and, and digest what processes that we can use, I think that's really important to, you know, maximize the salary cap and obviously maximize the roster. Now this next question I'm going to ask, I'm asking a little selfishly because I've been a DC United fan for years. I was little, I grew up in the area, got to watch the team in the orange seats of RFK, as go. did many of our supporters. So yep. they are loyal fans who know the rich traditions and history of this club. Mm -hmm. So as the club looks to move forward with you as the GM, how will you manage to keep the club's traditions alive in this next chapter? Yeah, no, it's, it's something I'm fully aware of. Um, I think it's something that excites me, to be honest, the pressure of trying to uh, attempt to even get close to that replica, you know, and I think um, the history that this club has is, you know, unmatched, you know, there's, there's uh, all of the MLS Cups, um, these are aspects that, again, drew me to the club, um, I think, you know, that, that fundamental um, loyalty of the fans and and kind of having having been there and and you know dc can get quite cold it's quite cold right now so you know i i know that you know the stands have been have been full and and they've been watching games and they've been looking at those games and and, and hoping that that success can come back um that's something that i'm eager to try and get back to that point um will it happen overnight probably not but I think these are things that, again, if we don't have those goals, if we don't have those um, kind of principles in place to, to try and focus on success, then why are we here? You know, and I think, again, just trying to uh, entertain and, 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 try and try and deliver a product that, you know, everyone can be proud of, especially the fans. You know, again, they pay their hard-earned money to, you know, sit there and, 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 and watch the team. I think the least we can do is, is, is try and repay them, for sure. Last thing, I always have to end on this. I know our supporters groups and our fans are so excited to have you here um, and to get to meet you in person. But for now, is there a message that you have for our supporters groups, for our loyal fans of DC United? I'm very excited to get going. It's a privilege. Um, I never think someone in this seat is, is truly deserving. You're almost a custodian to be in this chair. You know, there's been history that has been very successful and you know hopefully the club is very successful uh whenever i leave which is hope hopefully in a very long time um but while i'm here you know i want to enjoy it i want to get to meet everyone i'm uh, like i said i'm super excited and i want to repay the faith that everyone showed me um and, and and obviously that the fans have shown as well so that's something that again motivates me greatly